Welcome to another edition of Minor Obsession. Scott Lieberman with Sean Newton. And we are previewing the 49ers versus Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers at Western Kentucky. They're 4-2. We're 2-4. and four. Big game for us. We really need this W. Sean, thoughts? I hesitate to even talk first because I feel like you're just going to come in and slam in uh, Hilltoppers by 50 uh, <laughs> as your prediction. Uh, but uh, it's tough. You, like you said, it's it's really – I wouldn't call it a must win in the scenario of – you know, the season's over if we don't win, but it's definitely a must win for getting us back on track. Um, saw some good comments by Healy today about, or not today, but but this week since um, the last game about, uh, you know, we got to figure out a way to get back on track. Winning's important, but winning the right way is important too. And uh, anytime you're hearing statements like that, you know, people are like, let's, people are getting antsy. Fans are probably getting antsy to try and see a win. People forget quickly that new coaches are around and it takes time to get the process in place. Um, and I, I would love to see us get back on track and, and get a W with a team that we handled pretty well last year who also has a new coach this season. Um, They're doing general, a little bit better. They are doing a little better. Four and two versus our two and four. Well, they've also, if you look at their schedule – they they beat a really good Army team last week. And when I say really good Army team, I remember being at the app game and us having the Army game on the big screen at the app game. And they almost beat Michigan in a, in a nail brightener. They also beat FIU at FIU, a team that we just got demolished by. So just looking at those, those, those matchups... A little nervous. They they have some credible wins under their belt, so they're they're looking solid and they're they're pretty good in uh, conference play right now. Three and zero, we're on top of the conference. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a, a tale of two games between what we've seen the past few weeks and this week. I think this one's going to be defense heavy for sure. They are um, a, a different team than we've played so far. They are only scoring. 21 points a game and their defense is only allowing 18 points a game so those are stark contrasts from the past few weeks where we've had teams that are averaging 30-ish points a game and we're averaging 30 points a game so um, that's one of those ones that if you can exploit their defense and find things on film that you can figure out how to get around or if Benny can break off some big runs for us that could change quickly and their offense does not seem to be the high caliber offense that can really keep them in a game if they need to, at least from what I've seen on the stats line. So that's a, that's a pretty good hope for us, I, I suppose. Yeah. It's a great point out that you just made because the line dictates kind of a very unique game for us so far this season. Most of the time we've been favored or really close this is uh, one where we're we're dogs by nine and a half. Mm. The the last two games we were dogs by five, dogs by one, and then obviously Clemson and App were unique games where we were dogs by a lot. But otherwise, we were favored. So we're dogs by nine and a half, and the over under, which pretty much every game, counting out the early games, which were like in the mid fifties, were about sixty or so. This one's at forty eight and a half. So this is our lowest over under of the season. Back to what you're talking about, a defensive team and a 49ers team that hasn't necessarily been scoring like it was at the beginning of the season. So with all that said, I, you know, I like to bring up the lines. I feel like it kind of leads into our discussion. Nine and a half, 48 and a half. What are you thinking, Sean? Mm. Nine and a half and 48 and a half. Well, I think that the um, nine and a half is a lock. hundred percent cover there. Guaranteed. Cover by Western Kentucky? No, by us. Oh, okay. I think we are covering nine and a half for sure. Uh, I'm trying to think what my score would be here in my mind because I do think that their defense is going to um, keep us down some compared to what we've been scoring in the past. But here's my here's my optimism here. I think that uh, our defense has had to face some um, fairly – solid offensive teams over the past three, four weeks. So 
I think that they're primed to have have a good game where maybe they shut down some of those long plays that have really burdened us and and hampered our ability to stop other teams from scoring. So I'm going to say that uh under is wrong and we're we're going to go over that, but I'm I'm going to think it's like a 24 Charlotte 17 Western Kentucky. Wow, taking the under and the the straight up win. Yeah, I think I just said the the over was a lock, but I meant to say the under was a lock. 24-17. So I've got a little bit of a different take. Yeah, I know. You're probably picking Western Kentucky all the way. I think our backs are against the wall. It's a really big game for us. We've played a lot of good offenses. It's time for the defense to step up. I think the offense has shown they, they can really do their thing when, when called upon, when the game is – is within reach, and they just need the defense to keep it that way. I think this is a game of turnovers for us taking turnovers, and I see this as a blowout Charlotte win, lock on the money line, and the over. Charlotte 38, Western Kentucky 21. So just you going with the over? I'm going over. I'm going Niners. Niners I'm going by nine, a mile. I'm going Niners blowout. I think... I think we we go back to what we were doing before these Florida debacles and these 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 tough coaches that we've we've gone against that have kind of been had their roller coaster of life back to mid major schools. I think uh this is a big win for us. I think we 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 come out and we play ball. I think Western Kentucky just had a tough game against Army. I think they're probably looking past us to their next game against uh, against Marshall. And I think we get a, a big win here. And a big win that we need because if we lose this game, the season is not over, but the bowl opportunities are just about over. You're going to have to have a perfect season. I think, I think this is a big win for us coming back to a two-game homestand, trying to get back to 500. You're really trying to get the fans back on your side after your FIU take last week, huh? Hey, I just call it like I see it. When I'm right, I'm right. I knew that was going to happen, and I know this is going to happen. Okay, I like it. Uh, the thing that scares me, we talked about this with FAU too, is we embarrassed Western Kentucky last year. Embarrassed. 40-14. to 14. That's a... That's a sad state of affairs for Western Kentucky. Probably part of the reason why they have a new coach this season. So I'm going to guess they're coming with a little bit of chip on their shoulder. Um, I I would bet this is one of those ones that gets circled in the locker room as, a, hey, this team embarrassed us last year. Are you going to let that happen again, especially on our home turf? I think it's going to be close. I still think Charlotte's going to win this one, uh, but I, I think your blowout, it may be a little off. We shall see my my other lock, which whoa, this this isn't that that big, but Alex Highsmith, I'm going with over one and a half sacks. I think he gets to the quarterback. I think he might even get a forced fumble in this game. I think there's going to be a couple of turnovers on the Niners side. Picking our best defenseman to have a good game. I like it. It's a, <laughs> it's a real hot take. <laughs> you're, you're known for your hot takes there. Hey, you know, if if you're going to blow out a team, how are you going to blow out the team? Your best players are going to play at their best of their ability, and I think that's why my 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 offensive player is Benny LeMay. <laughs> <laughs> you can have him if you want him. I think he's going to be huge this game. I think yeah. With the way their defense is playing, uh, controlling the ball is going to be the name of the game for us. Uh, getting some holes for him to run through is going to be the name of the game. And uh, he's, I mean, he's been doing it. He's at first in Conference USA still in all purpose yards, 129. First in rushing yards total at 622. 103 rushing yards per game is first. Second in yards per carry at 6.48. And then third in, in the conference in scoring. So seven total TDs, five of them rushing. Obviously, he's our stud and our workforce, and we're going to need a big game out of him to be able to um, keep this one in hand. 
give our defense some rest, control the ball, control the clock, have a nice time of possession. I think for my defensive players, since you you went out on a limb and picked Alex Highsmith, (laughs) uh, uh, I'm going to take Jeff Gibble. Whoa, really going out on a limb there. Hey, I mean... I saw the press conference. We don't want to. I don't want to end my career on on a, a bad season. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's. Uh, I think that's a limb. Given he's hurt, he's he's shown his ankle isn't a hundred percent the past few games. Hopefully, with the uh, week off, he's starting to to feel a little better. He had interception against FAU. I'm looking for him to get another one of those this week, uh, and. Uh, really pull that that defense together and and keep the big plays down. I'm going. This is a a defense is a total thing. I'm going. They hold Western Kentucky to less than two plays over twenty yards. Hmm. I I don't have that kind of hot take. I my hot take is bend but don't break turnovers and maybe Western Kentucky scores some points during garbage time. But Charlotte Forty Nine er blowout. Let's go. Who are you taking on the offensive side of the ball? Are you sticking with Benny LeMay, or are you going to actually pick somebody? Uh, I I mean, I think Benny LeMay is a lock to really get going on, on the offensive side for us. If I was going to take someone else, I think I got to go with Cameron Dollar. I think uh, Reynolds should have a pretty good game, especially with Benny LeMay rushing it so well. Opportunity for play action and opportunity for our receivers to step up. And Cameron Dollar seems to be one of Reynolds' favorites. I think he has a nice game as well. He also can make a few passes, as we saw when I picked him a few weeks ago. Uh, (laughs) And Reynolds can catch. I'm sticking with receiver two. um, But... It looks like Michaelius Elder is going to get some playing time back again. He had injury he was dealing with, and when you need to run and control the ball, having some end rounds and uh, trick plays, reverses, things like that, can be huge in keeping the defense honest, and he's definitely our uh, speed guy who can come up clutch with with some of those. So I'm going to look for Michaelius Elder to have a good game, less in the uh, true passing sense and more in the change of pace, have uh, some reverses into rounds to take some of the pressure off the running backs. I like it. I think we score. I think we do some good stuff. I hope so, because after that we've got North Texas coming to town in the middle Tennessee. Uh, So a tough little stretch here for us. And like you said, season's not over if – if this one isn't a W, but uh, definitely as close to backs against the wall as you can in terms of bull eligibility before the season's done. All right. Well, any other hot takes from you, Sean? Anything else that the fans should be looking out for? ESPN Plus, 4 o'clock at Western Kentucky. Yes, all that is true. Some things to keep an eye on. Chris Reynolds is just 48 yards passing shy of uh, his second straight 1,000-yard season, which is impressive. Um, And Victor Tucker's 42 yards shy of 1,000 receiving yards in his career. So that's nice. Keep an eye on those two players. Be some good milestones for them to get. And... uh, for anybody going to Western Kentucky, enjoy the game. It's not too far of a drive down the road, so hopefully we got a nice little audience there and can hear them nice and loud on the TV. Anyway, moral of the story is 49ers with a big W, getting back on track, 3-4, and four, coming to the homestand. We really need this one to keep the momentum going and get back on track. I feel good about it. I think he, Coach is going to really get them in a good position place and I think Western Kentucky is ready for their first conference loss and why not us why not the Niners let's go let's go
So until then, remember to check us out on social media, Twitter, Instagram. Email us, minorobsession49 at gmail.com. And remember to wear green and go Niners. <laughs>